Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Whatever you pray of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. The predominant theme today in our hymns and readings is that of Christian prayer. And behind the prayers is your identity. You, ought, you know that you ought not just pray to anyone. The only way to confidently pray is to know who you are and how you relate to the one who hears you and gives to you. You know that you may ask the Father because you know that you are his beloved children. And as dear children, you have a dear Father. You have full access to the divine Father God. Everything that is his is yours. So just ask. Now, you are his children by his giving. No one can actually make themselves a child of the heavenly Father. He's not your Oliver Warbooks. It may be a hard knock life, yet no amount of choosing, pursuing, or hoping will make this God your father. Instead, he chooses you. He gives, you receive. He has given you the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit and baptism. He put his name upon you. And this is why you are called Christian, child of God. Because you've been marked with Jesus' cross and with his name. You have his blood washed upon you for atonement. His flesh is your sparkling white garments. His cross is your branding and his name is your own. You are Christian because you are Christ's. That all of this is a gift to you from your giver God. Again, we must be clear here. You are God's children not because he created you, but because he redeemed you. To be redeemed is to be bought back, to be purchased with his own son's blood. And your adoption as sons in Christ, that was given to you. Only those in Christ Jesus may rightfully then be called God's children. Because in him and in him only do you have forgiveness of sins? It's precisely that good news of Christ's forgiveness that God uses to gather you unto himself. Because in Jesus alone does the Father give you the promised inheritance of salvation and eternal life, all of this yours by your baptism. Now, when we forget that we are already in Christ, then we often return to who we once were. Actually, our lives are marked by this going back and forth between who we are in Christ and who we once were in sin. This is nothing new. Our forefathers did the same. God chose Israel as his people. He redeemed them by the blood of the Passover lamb. He delivered them from bondage and slavery in Egypt. He overcame their enemies with the waters of the Red Sea. And he was leading them with the promise of a land that would be theirs, a rich land flowing with milk and honey. But as we heard, the people became impatient on the way. They forgot who they were. And they forgot their God who was for them. And so they spoke against God and against the one whom God sent, his prophet Moses. In effect, they were saying, and they actually said this literally on a, another occasion, it was better the way it used to be, slaves in bondage to that tyrant Pharaoh. He was a far better father than you. We loved that land that foreign land. 
We loved living in that land of evil, of idolatry, and even under a king who was killing our male children. Incredible. Just a few, the span of a few months or years, they forgot great, God's great mercy and his steadfast love toward them. They forgot how he had chosen them and brought them out. They forgot who they were. They forgot their name, the redeemed of God. And they give away their birthright for a pot of lentil stew. And it was for this reason that God sent fiery serpents among them. He allowed them to live like they once did in Egypt, to live apart from him, to suffer pain and death again. After all, apart from the giver God, apart from their heavenly father, there is no good thing. Not freedom, not healing, not life, nothing. And the serpents then were given to them as a quite deadly reminder of who they once were. This is how the Lord calls you to repentance. He gives you over to that which you desire. He allows you to forsake him, to forget him, to leave him behind, to neglect his word, to fail to confess your sins, to ignore what God did for you in your baptism, to neglect his very body and blood in the sacrament. He does this to call you back to repentance. Like the prodigal son who squandered everything that was his, his birthright under his father, and only then realized what he had lost. The father then restoring his birthright and his inheritance. Every repentance is returning to the confidence of who you are in Christ. You said today, I, a poor, miserable sinner, in, a sinner in need of God's mercy. But that wasn't the final word. You also said, be gracious to me and merciful to me. Or perhaps, in the way of your fathers, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against his prophet. Whether it was old wandering Egypt, whether it was old wandering Israel, or it's you, the new Israel, repentance is trusting in the mercy of God that has been revealed to you in the holy, innocent suffering and death of Jesus. And the final word from God is never you shall die, but always forgiveness and life. So again, do not forget who you are. Do not forget whose you are. Because you are in Christ, you are already now a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. By your baptism, God the Father gave you new life and continues to give you every good thing. Those are his words for you today. And his words give you what they say. They're not empty. They're not powerless. When God speaks, he does. When God gives you a promise, he keeps it. To give another example, St. James speaks by way of metaphor in the way Numbers gave it by way of story. Our people in the wilderness had heard God's words but refused to be and do what they received. God said, you are my people, and they said, we'd rather be pharaohs again. God said, I redeemed you from bondage and death. Remember the death of the male children? And they said, wasn't it nice in Egypt? To say it in the way of St. James today, be doers of the word, not hearers only. He gives a metaphor, and it's, it's that of a mirror. 
A hearer and not a doer is like a man who, observing his natural face in a mirror, observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. A hearer and not a doer forgets that he is in Christ and that God is working all good things, accomplishing everything in him. He hears for a time, but then the words are not given root to germinate, to sprout, to grow, and to bear much fruit. He hears, but he refuses to listen. Or, again in the way of James, he sees, but he refuses to believe what he sees. And he'd rather be what he imagines himself to be, what he was. On the other hand, this is how James would have you look in the mirror. To look in the mirror and see in himself, in yourself, Christ Jesus by faith. To see yourself in the mirror as one whom Jesus Christ has redeemed. And to not then forget who you (laughs) are, but rather to forget who you once were. James says that when we look in the mirror, we ought to see the perfect law of liberty. The perfect law of liberty. Now that statement is rich with meaning. Because you know that the law is the eternal will of God. That's been revealed to you in the books of Moses and precisely in the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words. Those words were given to the people in the wilderness who had forsaken God, who had forgotten him. To bring sin and death upon them that sin might increase. And to show them how, apart from God, they could do no good thing. Namely, that this, these words, these commands, could be fulfilled, could be obeyed, could be kept, could be held fast to only by one. One man whose name is Jesus. In Jesus, we see the perfect will of God, not only spoken, but done. Not just heard, but done. Only in Jesus do we see a hearer of God's word and a doer. Jesus is the one who obeys his Father's will completely and perfectly. And because he obeyed his Father's will and also suffered the chastisement for all of our disobedience, we have in him a gift, a great gift. That is his righteousness. That is his perfect obedience and his blood-bought full forgiveness. He kept the law completely and has given us this obedience as a gift. We are made righteous in Jesus. And since the law is kept, then we are free. Liberty. The perfect law of Christ sets us free. Free from accusations, free from judgment, free from captivity to sin, free from the law's condemnation. It's true, when you look in the mirror with your eyes, you see only yourselves. But maybe next time, see this. See what was done for you in your baptism when you were clothed in Christ and united with him in his death. When you look in the mirror, see one for whom Jesus Christ died. And thus, see in the mirror a complete, obedient child of God. Yes, it's true, your flesh clings to you like filthy rags, Paul says, a body of death. And while this is true, we remain in a struggle to do what we know is right, and to not do the things we know are wrong. But essential to this struggle is not our own strength, but rather faith. Faith given by the Holy Spirit, faith that rests confidently, not in who we were, but who we are by God's giving in Christ Jesus. When you see yourself in the mirror, maybe see the mark that was placed upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And thus see in yourself, Jesus, the perfect law of liberty. 
Such confident faith, knowing who you are, your identity as a Christian, means that you now know not only what to pray for or even who to pray to, but you also know then how to speak and to act, to be doers of the word. You aren't the same people that you once were because you are in Christ and thus the old is gone and the new has come. You are God the Father's beloved children, beloved children in Jesus, purchased and won, chosen and adopted all through the waters of baptism. Don't forget who you are. And pray God keep you in this faith and in the perfect love of Christ until he comes again. May God grant it in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen.